So again, my name is Lee Henry and I'm the trainer here with Kid Reports and this is for the teacher application training. So what I'm gonna do is take you through the teacher application and show you all of its functionality. So the first thing, of course, uh, you can use Kid Reports on any mobile device, uh, whether it's a smartphone or a tablet, but you can run it on iPad or Android devices. So you would just go to the App Store or the Play Store or wherever you get your Android applications and you can download those, the, uh, those, uh, the Kid Reports app directly to those devices. So once you do that, you can get logged in. I am currently set up on a computer and I'm gonna launch my teacher application from the computer. And I'll just show you that login page just looks like this on a tablet. It will show the version immediately below the Kid Reports logo. And the current version is 2.12.8. You'll put in your username. Today I'm gonna to be Mary Anderson. And your password, and then sign in. You will see the first room that pops up alphabetically. Now Mary has access to all rooms, so if I click on the room menu immediately below this roster carousel, um, I can sign myself in or check myself into the room. So basically, when you log into the application, you can see Mary's picture appears here at the upper right-hand corner. She's logged into the app, but she's not actually checked into a room. So now, let's say I wanna check into a different room. So let's say for this afternoon, we're gonna be in the kindergarten room. And attendance will synchronize from ProCare as long as you have attendance sync turned on for ProCare to Kid Reports. The synchronization is only one way, but it is immediate. As soon as children are signed in by a parent through the kiosk or a fingerprint method, um, they will sync over, or they will sync over if they're signed in by a staff member using the batch check-in or the receptionist functions. Those will all synchronize attendance over to Kid Reports. But if you do have to check, or um, if you have to manually sign a child in, just go to the attendance tab at the lower left. And if those kiddos were signed in, they would show over here in in, I'm actually gonna manually sign most of these kiddos in. And then just check in. But of course, make sure you check in as a teacher. So you just select your name. You go to the uh, person icon here and these are all the teachers. The smiley face child icon is all the children. It defaults to whoever is currently signed out and then you can check them in. So now, the teacher has been successfully checked in, as have the children. Just go to the home icon to return. Once you're signed into the room, notice that we've got a couple of flags or indicators on Eldon's profile. So before you sub, uh, record any activities, especially a meal item or anything, you may wanna check and see what these flags are about. One is a warning triangle, the other is a red flag. Tap on the child's picture and that opens up their profile. And you can see that Eldon is lactose intolerant and he actually has a peanut allergy too. So it's a good idea that you check these beforehand to make sure the child, um, if there's a medical condition or in this case, an allergy. And if you do need to edit that information, just tap on the pencil, put in your edits, and then tap on the check mark to save. Same with emergency contact information. You can add emergency contacts for the day or if you don't need an emergency contact anymore, you can remove them. And again, tap on the check mark to save. What you'll also see for the child and the family members, the little camera icon here, if that's active for you, you have an active camera on your device, it'll be darkened in uh, blue and you can take a picture of the child and set a new profile picture for the child if you wish. Same for the family member by clicking on their picture. It opens up their profile picture and you can do the same for them. So those are the uh, basic profile settings that you'll see for each child and for the associated family members. So now that we've um, recorded attendance and we've checked Eldon's profile, let's actually record an activity. So today, uh, we're just gonna select activity. Now, you can begin by selecting the activity and then select children, or you can select children first. So I'll just show you how that works. 
So I've clicked on two different children's names. And when I click on the activity, you can see their pictures appear. If I want to add additional children, I can go to the far right where the pencil icon is, and I can select all the children who are in attendance today. Now I do want to note that Kelly Bundy is not present today. She is absent, so her picture is grayed out. However, if you have an activity that you want to record for a child, you can record it for them. Select the button that says include absent and then select all and it'll select all the children in the room, even those that are absent that day. I don't really want to do that for this activity, but I'm going to select all the present children, tap next, and now all the children appear in the bar at the top. So the activity we're doing this afternoon is coloring and drawing. So we're going to select those details. Notice if you go further down, you can add a new detail. You can just say a new D. I'm going to just put in new detail and tap add. You'll see it appears and it is selected. Below that, you can upload a picture or a video if you wish. I'm going to upload a picture. And because I'm on a computer, I don't get the option, but you, if you are on a, a mobile device, you'll get the option to use the camera if you have an active camera or to select from the gallery like I'm doing now. So I'm going to select um, some artwork here. And the picture comes in and you'll see the picture there. If you uh, upload the wrong picture, you can delete it and upload a new one or take a new picture. And you can do multiple pictures if you wish. I just recommend doing one at a time. Below the media, you can enter the time, the teacher, you can add notes, a signature, and a reminder. So for the time, maybe it was really busy when you were doing this activity and it was a little while before you could enter it. Maybe it actually happened at 3.45 p.m. And the teacher who recorded it is Mary. You can add notes here. You can add a signature if you wish. So you're gonna put the signature here, but it's actually Mary Anderson. Tap save, and you'll see the signature is saved as an image. But notice where I typed it in, it appears signed by at the upper left so that you know exactly who signed it if you can't read the signature. And then finally, uh, there's a reminder you can set. So I can go to reminder here, and I can select um, increments of 15 minutes. This is a countdown reminder. Um, I can start at 15 minutes and go up to four hours. Or I can just go over and set the exact time. Maybe I want to come back at 6 p.m. And then I'm going to save that reminder. And if you've recorded everything for this activity, just click Save or Tap Save. And now those activities are saved. And you can see all the children are selected. Once you save an activity, you'll have two or three buttons on here. Uh, there may be an additional folder icon. The folder icon converts any activity to a portfolio item, which is for longer-term child development observations. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. You can also use the pencil icon. Then you can edit the entire activity. So maybe I had the wrong picture here, and I want to upload a new picture. And we're going to say family coloring here. And now I have a new picture and I can save that because that's what should be on that child's profile. And of course, you can always delete it if you made a mistake. So that's how you record activities and how you would come back and edit and what the different buttons or icons mean on the face of the activity. So going back to the left, these are the activities that are currently set up for my, my center. And they are color coded. There's daily routine in yellow, portfolio is purple. Meals are in green and administrative items appear in red. So let's say we want to record a portfolio activity. So for portfolio, again, you want to make sure you select all the children who would be participating in this activity. But notice that state standards are toggled on. So portfolio activities, it is expected that these will most often align with state standards. Uh, because these generally are going to be things that you're keeping for a long time in that child's uh, portfolio. So you can turn off or on the state standard. You can just toggle it on or off. 
and then you'll select the age category. And from here, you'll select the domain. And maybe today it's physical development. And maybe it's fine motors, motor skill. And we're gonna just uh, select a few of these. So because we're doing art today, we're gonna manipulate writing, drawing, and art uh, tools. Scroll down a little bit, and now I'm gonna save those two state standards. Now I can move on, and I can record my details for this particular activity. Again, I could add a picture if I want. Uh, let's see, we'll add this one. So there's another picture. And then of course you could go and put the time, the teacher, all the same things. We're just gonna save this one for now. Now I want you to note, it, of course it saves in its own color code. It shows up as purple, so we know exactly that it's a portfolio activity. You'll have the same buttons, but now there's an additional icon here, the eye icon for observation. So let's say we wanna make an observation about Wendy. Tap on the eye icon and each of the state standards comes up. So now you can rate the child on each of the state standards and you'll make your observations here. And then apply. And again, for the next state standard, maybe she's skilled at this. And then apply. And then when you're done making your observations about these state standards, just save it at the bottom. And now you'll see next to each state standard is your assessment for that standard. That's all that appears on the face of it, but your comments would appear in their entirety when that is available, when that goes out. So that's how portfolio items work. And basically every activity works pretty much the same way. You can begin by selecting children. You can select them here if you wish, and then go to the activity, or you can select the children up here. So that's about 95% of what you're gonna be doing in the teacher application is recording activities. So I showed you the attendance button at the lower left. Let's look at what these other four buttons do. So once children are signed into attendance, you can move them from room to room. So let's say I wanna move one of these kiddos to another room. So I can select move room, and now I can select the child to be moved. And today uh, we're gonna to move Julie. Notice when I select the name, the move button becomes active. If I go to move, now I can select the room I wanna move this kiddo to. And just because I have other children there, um, I'm gonna move this kiddo to infant room two. It'll say one child has been successfully transferred to infant room two. That disappears after about five seconds. When I go back to the room, you'll see there's only four children in the room now. If I go to infant room two, you'll see Julie there and all of her activities moved with her. So that's how you move children once they are in attendance. The next function is the messages button at the bottom center. When you tap on messages, you can see messages that you've received or messages you've sent. The arrow pointing in is your inbox, the arrow going out is the sent message. So you can see I've got a couple of new messages that uh, Mary has sent recently. Uh, and of course, whoever is logged into the Kid Reports application, that's whose messages appear here. You can write a new message, just tap on new message and you can select the school director, other teachers, or a room. Now Mary has access to more than one room, so she could actually send a message from a different room if she wanted to, but right now we're in the kindergarten room. I can put in a, a message here, and I can type in my message, and I can even attach a picture if I want. I'm not gonna do that for now. And then tap send, and that will send your message. So that's how you send a new message. Uh, one word about sending messages, right now you can either send to all the family members in that room, or you can select a single child. Let's say if I wanted to message just Wendy's family members. If I go to messages and then new message, I'll still see the three previous selections, but now I can also select Wendy. 
So you can either do one or you can do all. So that is the messages section. Next over is media. So media is a little bit different from an activity. When you click on media, it asks you if you want to, to use photo or video, and then it'll prompt you if you want to use the camera or a gallery, it automatically goes to gallery for me. Um, and maybe today this was an activity that wasn't aligned with any, anything specific. Maybe we just had a dog visit us today. One of the kiddos brought in their, their family pet. And then we're going to add the children that we want to receive this. And we're going to include uh, Kelly, even though she's not here today, because she wanted to see a picture of the doggy. So now all the children are selected, including Kelly, even though she's absent. You can still add the time, the teacher, notes. If you want, you could add a signature and a reminder. And then when you tap save, that will send to those family members. Now I want you to notice Kelly is absent but we recorded an activity for her. So because we did that, there's an A that appears above her picture and to the right. So that's how you know um, an activity was recorded for a child who is absent. So be looking for those just in case. So that's how you just send a picture if you just wanna send a picture without associating it with any particular activity. Finally, at the bottom right is tracking. The tracking sheet, um, this has name to face on it. This is one of the default features that you can use. Uh, some states require it. It ensures that you're making visual contact with those kiddos at set time intervals throughout the day. Um, at my center, it is every 30 minutes. So we're gonna check off four o'clock here and we're gonna save that. So we did the name to face for 4 p.m. And when I go back to tracking, there's another really important feature. That is the where is feature. This feature shows the location of every child in the center, even if they've moved. So you can see Julie, we moved her from kindergarten to infant room two, and earlier Cindy was moved to infant room two. You can browse, uh, it defaults to all children, but you can browse by the age category. Notice um, when I, or excuse me, the room, I select the kindergarten room. These are all the children who are assigned to the kindergarten room even Julie, so I can see that she was moved here. But notice if I go to infant room two, there's no one there because the two kiddos currently there, they appear under the original classroom. So one will appear under kindergarten and the other will appear under infant room one. So we do have a question. Can you customize the daily routine items? Yes, the actually your, your administrator would do that for you if you're not an administrator. The administrator can add anything or customize anything in this menu on the left. Uh, so they can modify the content of existing items. For example, in my drop-off information, I've added the COVID-19 questions. So parents can enter this information before they leave their child at the center. Uh, so this is one way that something might be customized. And I, I included the temperature too in half degree increments. Um, and then on top of that, the regular drop-off information, which is last diaper change, if that's applicable, last meal, and any details about what the child had to eat that morning. And if they want to upload a picture or make additional notes or comments here, they can. It's all the same functionality for the parent in this particular instance. And then all you have to do is save it. But yes, your administrator, uh, they can add or remove anything or customize anything here. Uh, for example, if we go under meals, um, I can guarantee you that Kid Reports doesn't default to Big Mac, Chipotle burritos, steak, or smoked salmon. So I added all of that, um, uh, including pizza and burrito, just in general, because I was really hungry when I was doing this, and I added all those things. Uh, but you, yes, bottom line is you can customize anything you're looking at there. Long-winded response, but that's the answer. <laughs> So we've gone through about 98% of what you can do. We've gone through the buttons on the bottom and all of the basic functionality that you're gonna be doing most of the time. There's a few other things to show you. If your administrator does make a change, for example, to an activity, like they do add new food items for you, for those to come into the teacher application, you need to synchronize your app with the administrative portal. To do that, you go to the upper right-hand corner 
and to the left of Mary's picture is a synchronize button. When you click on that, it will log you out and back in again, and it'll bring over any changes your administrator made. That might also include checking children in through ProCare if something is not uh, syncing immediately for some reason. Also, when you go to Mary's profile, her picture there, uh, you'll see some additional functions here. I already showed you what the profile looks like, which is you can update your picture, uh, but you can also edit drafts if you saved anything as a draft. You can view reminders, and I do have a reminder here for 6 p.m. And you can also look at quick links. So we are in my kindergarten room, and I've got some lesson plans saved to envelopes here. Now what these are, they are just hyperlinks to um, content outside of kid reports. So these were saved somewhere in the school uh, website or in a folder somewhere that was easily accessible by everyone at the center. Uh, so for example, fish to fish lesson plan, when we open that up, it's just a hyperlink to an existing document. Uh, your administrator also sets this up for you. But this is an additional feature that you have. It's called Quick Links. And then the final setting under your picture is your sign out when you're done for the day. We're not going to do that yet. At the upper left, those three lines are called the slide out menu. And the first of those is the kid planner. So here we are. It defaults to the first room in the list, but we are in the kindergarten room. And you can see we've got two plans for today. And if I want to create a new plan to use a little bit later in the day, I can do that. Uh, so, or I can plan one for tomorrow for that matter. I don't have to plan it for today. So we've got one we're going to plan for tomorrow. How about that? So we select the date, make sure we're in the right room, we're on plan, and then tap the plus button, the blue plus button at the upper right. Now we can begin creating a plan, and maybe we're going to do a menu for tomorrow because we're going to change it up a little bit. And we're going to have Big Macs and steak and smoked salmon and vegetables and uh, fruit. We've even got, uh, a, this is something I customize. You can put special diets in here if you wish, anything that you think is useful. For drink, uh, let's say we're just gonna have water. Actually, we're gonna add a water. We're gonna say they're gonna have Perrier tomorrow. And the amount that we want to um, offer them to drink is gonna be entered here. You can either type it in or use the little arrows that I just did at the right. So you could type in the number or use the arrows to go up and down. You can select additional rooms. Maybe you're planning where it says select rooms. You can plan this for the entire center at once if you wish. I'm not gonna do that, but do understand if you wanna plan for more than one room, this is where you must select it. If you don't select it here, you will not have the option of doing it later. This is the only time you'll have the opportunity to, to schedule for additional rooms. I'm not gonna do that right now. You can make notes about whatever the activity is going to be. Like maybe you wanna make sure that they are offered so much food. Um, and then you just save the plan when you're ready. And when you save, it'll ask you to confirm that. And there it is. We've got another meal plan saved for tomorrow. So once you save a plan, you'll see an X to the right to delete it if you made a mistake. Pencil to edit. Notice when I open to edit, I no longer have the room selection. So again, the only time you can select additional rooms is when you're actually creating the plan. But you would make changes there. The first button shows you what's in the plan. And the second button, sort of teal colored, this is where you would use it to copy this plan to a future date. So if I wanted to plan the same thing for next Thursday, I could. I could also do a date range. If I wanted to plan this for all next week, I could select the entire week. Click OK and it'll plan it out. So there it is. So once you've made your plan, right now only you and your administrator can see it. The parents aren't gonna see anything yet because it's just a plan right now. So it becomes a little later in the day and you're ready to use that. So now let's use the meal plan for our room. And I wanna deselect all the children for a moment just to show you how this works. 
We're going to go back to the slide out menu, select Kid Planner, select our room, we're in it, and now we're going to say use. And when we do that, we see the only available plan here is a meal. Because this other plan was already used today. So this plan is selected. Notice it automatically selected the four children who are in my room. Just make sure that if you have multiple plans that have not been used, that you're only using the plan you want to use right now. Now I'm going to edit this because maybe I want to change something. So I could go here and I could edit, including my observations. Save my plan. And when you're done making edits, click the blue button that says Save Events. Tap No unless you want to keep planning. But this will return you to the application. And the meal that we just recorded is now available. You'll see it here. It's been recorded. And now you can edit this if you want to make specific details about any one child. Or if you want to add a picture for that child, you can do it at this time. So now it's visible to parents in the daily report. Two other items in the slide out menu. You can go to settings. Settings will show notices. You see right here, if I go show, it'll show me what notices I have. Um, and if I did have items that were pending upload, I would see them here and I could refresh that to see which uploads maybe were stuck. So if you have the red bar that says events waiting to send, you want to come to this page and you're looking for anything that appears to be stuck. Uh, so you may actually have to delete an individual item or even clear the entire queue. And when you clear the entire queue, it means you've got to re-enter everything that was waiting. Uh, but that does occasionally happen. You can also synchronize your app by clicking on Refresh Configuration. And then the final setting in the slide out menu is Help. So that's really everything I wanted to show you.